So, what is the uh, way in which we should understand this? First and foremost, it is important for us to understand it within, you know, the context of the time. That in these times, uh, people have set laws in terms of what ages people can marry at and what ages they can't. They have set a certain set of laws where uh, if one has relations with a woman who is, or a young lady, who is below a certain age, then they will consider that to be pedophilia. And if she's above that age, then it's considered to be, and it was consensual, consensual sex, which is okay. The point is that when you go and look at the numbers across Europe, you will find that it varies from country to country varying all the way from 12 to 18. So it just depends on which country you go to, from France to Germany to Netherlands to Italy to Spain. You know, you're going around those different countries, you'll find the numbers varying from 12 to 18. So what may be considered uh, acceptable relations in one country is considered to be pedophilia in another country. So they have numbers that they have set to define where, where con, uh, consensual sex is acceptable or not. For us in Islam, we have a natural principle, a natural dividing line, which is for a woman to be considered an, an, an adult or that she may be married and have sexual relations, etc., that dividing line is puberty. That is a natural dividing line. Puberty is the body saying that that young lady is now capable of bearing a child. That's what puberty is about for females. Menstruation. So whether one in this society considers that person still to be a child or not, that's not the issue. The issue is that biologically, she is now an adult capable of bearing child. That is the bottom line. And it's a natural division. And that will take into account variations which exist amongst people, amongst tribes, areas of the world, etc. Because you'll find that number varying. In Arabia, Nine was a common age for puberty. Other countries, it varied. So that was, the, that was the point. This was the dividing line. When we're talking about pedophilia, what is pedophilia anyway? Is pedophilia really adults going and marrying children? No. The pedophiles were coming out of Britain and Germany. This is the most largest uh, body of pedophiles in the US, you know, going into Southeast Asia, to Thailand, to, to Sri Lanka, the Philippines, these countries where people are in poverty, right? And where, you know, young children have sold themselves, sold, sell their bodies to, to earn money. And where parents will be willing to sell their children for money. These people who go there, are they going there to marry these kids? No. They're going there to abuse them, just to to take pleasures and then leave. So it's not about marriage at all. So when we look in terms of the Prophet Muhammad situation, this was marriage. So one, we have a natural dividing line, puberty. Two, we have the issue of whether it was marriage or whether it was sexual abuse. And uh, when we consider, really, 1,400 years ago, what were the ages in which people were considered to be marriageable and not? I'm sure, I'm not, I haven't studied uh, British history or not, but I'm sure if you go back in British history 1,400 years ago and look at the marriage customs of that time, it's not going to be any different. So, you would end up having to go back and label the British kings as pedophiles and all these other kinds of things too. You know? So this is, the point is that 
in the world at that time, they didn't have, uh, they had not set these older ages that we now find 18 and 16 and 18, this type of thing, as they have here today. People matured faster. Life was shorter. You know, if you made it to 50, you know, you're an old, really old person. You, you know, that's, you've lived your life out. People died 35 as an old person. 35, 40, you died then, you, you died an old person. So, life was, people developed much faster. As soon as the child reaches a certain age, they were taught the basic things that uh, a person should know, how to run a f family, take care of a home, cook, and all the different things that were needed. Children learn that. What we call children today learn that. So, where today you can find a woman in her 20s, studying in university, she still doesn't know how to cook, she can't iron, you know, she's basically a baby, still going to university. I mean, this was something in those days inconceivable. Right? So, the attitudes of society towards responsibility and all this kind of thing have changed. Consider Usama ibn Zaid, who Prophet Sallallahu made the head military commander for the Muslim armies. 17 years old. Imagine putting, you know, 17 year old, the head of the Pentagon, you know, he's got his finger, he can press any button and send missiles all over the world. Hey, we would be in World War III in a minute, right? So we know that it's a, there was a whole different level of maturity. People matured at a whole different pace. So we always have to look at these things within the context. And then we look at the consequences. People who have suffered from pedophilia in childhood. What about those people when they reach adulthood? These people have problems. They got psychological problems. They're going to psychiatrists and you know, they've got all kinds of... Who was Aisha? Aisha was one of the leading scholars of the Ummah, the fourth most prolific narrator of hadith, you know, scholar of Sharia, honored by the Ummah. She wasn't a person with, you know, psychological problems and all this kind of thing. Her life was just shattered, no. So obviously, that whole marriage situation was a legitimate marriage. It had nothing to do with pedophilia in any way, shape or form. It was uh, a legitimate marriage which produced, you know, positive and good results. And it was a marriage of that time. But it remains legitimate. That if a Muslim man, in his 50s even today, wanted to marry a young woman who was 9 or 10, she had reached puberty, it is legitimate. The fact that the world is not doing it, in most places people are not doing it, doesn't mean that it no longer is permissible. No. It remains. And in some societies, I know for example in India, though, you know, the whole issue of what they call child marriages, they try to ban it. It is officially illegal. But they have shown that well over 50% of marriages taking place in India today, in spite of the banning and everything else, the, the girls are marrying under age, what they consider to be underage, which is like 16. 